Hello, everybody. Welcome back. It's Connor here, and we are about to get into the debrief. Quick points of action prior. Um, I'm joined by Gabe today. Brownie will be on in about 15 minutes. He's having his tea, aren't we all, at around about this time? So, yeah, uh, thank you to both of them for joining me this uh, this evening. It's a bit of an early one, so please, guys, there's already 700 of you in the building, which is nutty, Professor. Please make sure you're liking the video. Make sure you're subscribed. Um, normally we build a bit of an audience on here, but there's there's you guys who are absolutely baying either for blood or Javi Garcia, who knows, or, or both, or both, who knows. Um, I'm just going to pull up a few comments before we get going, everybody. As I said, nearly 800 allowed. Um, evening Connor, allowed. Uh, yeah, I just read a comment there and got it mixed up what I was saying um, around. So, Evening Connor, give me good news, please. Hello, Connor. Uh, hello, Connor, slap a like. Yeah, please do, everyone. As I say, uh, Brown is slacking. I know he needs to get his... Uh, <laughs> Needs to get his, his clock ticking. Um, but yeah, listen, we're going to go into everything. I am completely despondent with everything that goes on with Leeds right now. I am just so checked out and it's painful. Because I've not been this checked out in years, to be honest, but I'm just so tired and upset and and, and down <laughs> with everything that's Leeds. So I tried to distract myself the other day, went out for a walk, you know, took myself out. and But I just still find myself thinking about Leeds. It just is what it is, isn't it? Okay, so yeah, uh, we're going to talk about uh, Javi Garcia later on. Gabe's going to uh, remind me of that fact because I will forget, uh, but we're going to bring in Gabe right now. Gabe, how are you doing, mate? How's how's everything going? You buzzing? I went from total depression over the weekend to yeah. waking up today ready to choose violence. <laughs> choose yeah, violence. Yeah, I'm choosing yeah. violence today. <laughs> I, I'm just... Uh... If you had to choose a weapon for violence, what would you use? A Jesse Marsh audio clip <laughs> it just does everyone's head in. Good answer. <laughs> right, mate. So let's, yeah, let's get into it. We'll touch on the Everton game first. There's obviously like an earlier thousand, um, thousand people in the building. Please make sure you like in the video, thousand people within about five seconds. So thank you. Um, as I say, Brown is going to join us in about 10, 15 minutes. I mean, let's get into it, mate. I, I want your thoughts on the Everton game. I've sort of reflected on it and. I think I'm probably more downbeat about it. They outfought us. They wanted it more. Um, just, uh, listen, it's not an I told you so thing. I, I almost said it to you guys on the group chat because I wanted to be proven wrong. I wanted to put it in there and for me to be jinxed or something like that. Mm. Uh, absolutely nothing. Nothing was there. Um, a pitiful crap performance from the boys. We have to say that. We can't yeah. just look at look at the, bo the board for everything. We'll get onto the board. Of course we will. Um but yeah, um, overall, just uh, 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 I don't even know what, what's the best word to describe that with, mate. Go for it. You're the author. We're a family-friendly show here, so it's very yeah, difficult to, to find good words. Here's the thing. Before I say anything else, I'm going to asterisk this. Board accountable, number one. Bo yep. The board's the one to blame. <laughs> number two, it cannot be overstated how difficult of a position we are in now that we waited to sack Jesse Marsh and didn't have somebody else lined up. So I don't want it to come forward that this is me fixating on the players. However, Jesse Marsh is gone and the players can't control what the board does, right? Mm -hmm. So they have to go out and put a performance in. I'm also not going to fixate on the performances of Willie Nanto, who's 19, and Somerville, who's 21. These are kids, right? Like, I'm not saying they shouldn't be held accountable at all, but Nanto has been our best player this year, at least in attacking positions. My glasses are all skewed, so I'm going to take them off. Um, and Somerville has had good performances for us. They weren't good, right? But I'm not going to fixate on them. I'm also not going to fixate on guys who have been here three or four matches or two or three matches. I'm not going to fixate on Max Vogel, who was playing with a dislocated shoulder. Yeah, he wasn't great, but I'm not going to hone in on him. I'm not going to hone in on Weston McKinney because he's been here a couple of matches. Needs to be better? Absolutely. But I'm not going to fixate on him. I'm going to go in on the two guys that have been here through both relegation scraps and who are supposed to be leaders on the on this team. Two senior players, Jack Harrison, who's 26 years old, and Patrick Bamford, who is 29. And it's not about the performance. The performances were terrible. But what bothered me was this, the body language. Horrific from the jump. When something didn't come off for Bamford, he threw his arms up and was walking back into the press or in, into the mid block because we weren't pressing. Uh, Jack Harrison as well. How many times did he just unaccosted lose the ball bone and he's turning around looking at other people like it and when you're when you have young players like yanto and somerville who are they're looking to senior players 
for that leadership. Yeah. I, mean, I knew, and I didn't even, you know, typically like I know as Leeds fans, we love to get up for some of the extracurriculars, right? Like when Adams goes at people and McKenney gets involved. I didn't cheer this time because it felt different. It felt like they were just pissed off and they wanted to hit somebody. Like, honestly, that's how it felt to me. It didn't feel like a, come on, we're up for it. Let's get stuck in it. It felt like a futility scrap. Who was, who do you think was, who do you think wanted to have a fight with who? I thought McKenney wanted to hit anybody in a, uh, um, yeah, yeah. in an Everton uniform. And I think that Tyler Adams, Tyler Adams looked depressed and frustrated from the start. Uh, yeah. And, and I think that, like, I, I feel for McKenney a little bit because he's come in thinking he's going to play in a 4 3 3, thinking he's going to play under a different manager, but whatever. That's not, that's not the real issue. And I mean, he did okay and put in a good shift defensively, but he's being asked to do things that aren't really in his locker, right? We really need uh, Mark Rocco back. We really need a progressive midfielder. It just feels like we're stuck in this rut. And yeah. I, uh, it feels almost like an, and I don't want to be too depressive. And I'm so sorry if I, if I just sound horrible in the comments guys, but like it, it just seems inevitable because we have a board that thinks it's, it's cool to see how we do week to week with an interim manager that's never been a manager at this level or even like in this specific game you know, with, with these kinds of sides in these kinds of leagues. And it's just, it's just non nonsense. I, I, I think that when what you really need from the, this is why I'm angry at those two particular players. It's what you really need when, when you're in a tough position is for big personalities to step up. I got to say Luke Ayling for me has done everything he's, he can for this team. Do I think that he's, He's good enough long term, whether he's long term solution. No, but it, he's doing the best he can, and he's put in some tremendous shifts shifts over the past couple of weeks, and he's been a leader. But like, where are the other Patrick Bamford's behavior for me, like watching his body language from A to Z, it was horrific. It was horrific. I'm not saying that's the reason we had a poor performance, but like you expect out of professionals a professional effort, and I, I just two of the players that you need to step up in a match like that didn't. And so again, I don't want to fixate too much on this. I just feel it needs to be said when I'm looking at local journalists giving uh, um, Jack Harrison, one of the highest match ratings after that performance. And I'm like, what are you looking at? Like oh, we're looking for these scapegoats. Oh, Max Vober wasn't good enough. Oh, uh, um, you know, um, Rota, he's not good enough. Or like we're scapegoating guys who haven't had a, a chance to find their feet. And the real leaders of this team are getting free passes. And I just wanted to make sure it didn't happen here because there's no free pass for me for those guys. I, I thought they're just the behavior and the body language and the attitude. I mean, you could see uh, they gave Junior Furpo a, a lower rating than, than Jack Harrison. Junior Furpo is one of our better players in that terrible yes. match. Right. So yes. it, it just it just feels like it's becoming this toxic soup of finger pointing mm. and scapegoating. And the real the real issue here for me is the, the board. We're in this position because of the board. I'm not pissed off at Scobala. Yeah, he got. I think he got it wrong. Do we expect him to get it right? He's never done this before. So, yeah, yeah it's, it's um, I'm I'm just yeah. I I I feel at the minute, and I think you know when you were calling it almost like a toxic soup. I, I just feel there's no framework that the, the the successor. To Marcelo Bielsa, you're still seeing tendencies of it for me in that Everton performance. Still, like, don't get me wrong, we saw it against Man United. Skabala seemed yeah. to have a little bit more width, whatever. But I think maybe we were all taken in a little bit by how Man United play. You know, Man United play very counter-attacking, the, the fast flow and the coming forward. And, and, and that favours Leeds, doesn't it? Always, always did under Marsh as well. And I think when we've actually got a team to break down, all the same tendencies come out again. Leeds struggling to break you know, the opposition down, us funneling it down one side, which was Christensio Somerville this this time. And we just seem to be using him as an out ball consistently because Bamford wasn't working. Um, and I just look at this squad now and I think there's a lot of clearly very talented individuals, but there's no, there's no routine, there's no plan, there's no framework, there's nothing which is making this unit cohesive. Um, and I felt that under Marsh. I think he he always really struggled to get that, um, and and naturally it's, it feels like it's continued as well. Um, and I just think overall, when you look at the general pie, 
how we let that go with Jesse Marsh for so long. And just that option of Jesse Marsh after Marcelo Bielsa yep. was the nail in the coffin that is Leeds United. And well, Connor, at- you know this too. You played, right? So when you yeah. have, whether you think the manager is good or not, whether the manager is good or not, when you have a manager, there's some accountability for player behavior, right? Yeah. Because yeah. like, one thing I will say, and I think you've said this, so this is not us giving undue credit, is Marsh had the players playing for him, right? It wasn't working, but like, a manager can get that. Do you know who can't get that? An interim manager. Because where's the accountability? So a great case in point, I hate. I don't mean to just pile on Patrick Bamford, but I'm going to do it in this instance because he said a quote that was shocking to me. They were talking about being in a, the stress of being in a relegation battle. And he said that he loved that Skubala is just relaxed. And he said, yeah, I was unhappy to come out, come off um, um, during the Man United match. But Skubala handled it really well. He came and apologized to me and said he was wrong. I was like, What? Yeah. <laughs> because any any pro, any and I'm not again it's not a criticism of Scabala, but any manager who has like the backing of the board and the authority is like in there right they had appointed somebody so this yeah. is our guy one way or another he doesn't have to apologize to Patrick Bamford come off I'm the manager like the, the, the mentality there was I couldn't believe it when I heard that and I was just like and this is what I think people don't realize although they're like like oh you said March without without a plan it like, what did you expect? We expected to have a manager in because whether we th- think a new manager is a great appointment or not, one way or another, you can hold players accountable. Like, if Jack decides to have a terrible performance, what is he going to do? Bench him next match? No, he's not. Like, there's now there's no accountability for the players, and that's that's why it's so criminal to not have a, a new new guy lined up if you're if you're going to sack the old one. Hey, Brownie, how we doing? I'm on top of the world, mate. I am on top of the world. I was hoping you would have some. Yorkshire witticisms or something just to, to take me out of this slime pit of despair. I'll be honest, mate. Everybody seems surprised and shocked. I've seen it coming a mile off. And me and Connor, before you joined the debrief, Gabe, you obviously listened before Christmas. We got slaughtered for some of the games we were getting beaten. We got slaughtered saying, oh, it's all right. We've got plenty of games left. They were, now people might realise why me and Connor were being a little bit negative about getting beat at home to Fulham, not beating Everton at home, dropping points here, there and everywhere. Because now, now people realise that we are in one hell of a mess. Just It just feels like, I don't know about, I mean, well, you both and Brownie, obviously I'll come to you, mate, but it just feels at the minute that we are, I was listening to the, the Phil Hare show a little bit earlier on and, and Dan mentioned it perfectly, Dan Moylan, he said, just feels like we're drifting, you know? When fans were in, when we were 14th position and we were two points off the relegation zone, it was, it's all right, there's loads of teams down there. Forrest will get dragged in, you know, everybody's going to get dragged in. Leeds will stout because of the bulk of teams underneath us. And it kept going. We kept losing, not winning. Other teams picking up points, three points, whatever. It just kept going and spiralling and spiralling. And it just feels at the minute, I don't know about you two, but I almost just feel resigned to it. I'm just like, it just feels inevitable at the minute. There is, they just fit, there's nothing. I mean, the stat that was released earlier on about what are we now the only team not to have won in? Is it 10, 10 games with the only team in the entire football league to have not won a game in 10 games? In 2023, we've not won a game yet. We're one of the only teams in English football to have not won a game. It just feels, I don't know if you like um, have that same emotion, Brownie, but I just feel yeah. at the minute that it's just going. It's going really, really passively and, and easily and we're not doing anything about it. I think it's. Be- I think we feel like that because the history of following Leeds United, we know that this is, happens to us type of thing. But I mean, listen, if you, we, we had a, the Everton fan on a couple of weeks ago and he was in disarray, he was doom and gloom and they were done. A couple of weeks, fast forward a couple of weeks and, and everything's hunky-dory. Football's anything, it can change so quickly in football. That's the only thing I can... Think of but did, but did, did you not did you not fit, feel that when Daesh was appointed um there was almost a little bit of a framework there and they got it done in the right place didn't they they got rid of Frank and then they brought Daesh in within four days it just feels at the minute even with our managerial search it's fourth fifth sixth selection we're letting it drift and drift and drift and, drift, and it just seems to be getting worse and I, I'm just at least Everton with their absolute turmoil brownie that you heard when Mike was on the show and now yeah. the fans are revolting. The owners weren't turn, turn up at the stadium. They've got it right. It was in three or four days. And we're still 10, 11, two, I think it's two weeks today 
down the lines as Marsh went. Still, nothing is in place. Right, fourth match. Fourth match, yeah. I, I liken it to... Remember when Wolves sacked their manager and it, yeah. their managerial appointment seemed to go on and on mm. and on. And obviously then they got their man in. Do you reckon that was because that was he was a top manager, Brownie, maybe? It, <laughs> well, there's two differences. Obviously, the timing. Yeah. It, it was... Was it pre-World Cup? I'm sure... It, so yeah, yeah, it was. It was. I think it was just that. Yeah, actually, it's a good point. I think it was because they were, they were the only ones, weren't they? But yeah, yeah. Oh, oh. Brownie's frozen yeah. out. Oh, in that instance, back. they had time on their hand. They, they, they had time on their hand. They could wait for who they wanted. And they waited because they wanted their number one target. We're waiting. And like you say, it's not our number one target. It's not our second choice. It's not even our third. I mean, this guy no. has just come on the radar today. It, it, it right. feels like it, it, we are. We, we're. We're clutching at straws now, it feels. Uh, but Ronnie, it did you read like that, they, that they suspended the search to see how it would go with Everton? <laughs> I don't even know. I don't I don't know how to respond well, to that. Like, the... no. I'm from our last sacking. And we've gone backwards. We've not, we've not progressed. We're now in a relegation zone. We haven't won for three months. There's been no plan. For a long time, yeah. and people people look to just that period of time being good in the championship. This board was here before Bielsa came. There was bad decision mm -hmm. after bad decision before that good period. To me, it's <laughs> with the managerial appointments we've had, they've got one right out of what five, four, five, mm, five. I think it is. So, so have they just fluked one? Brownie, I have a question for you. I remember me and Connor doing a show oh, once about signings that Victor Otto had made. And we went through them all. And let me put it this way, there's, there's more bad than good. Eventually, you're going to get a good one. And, and, <clears> and that's what it felt like with the managerial appointments. Eventually, we'll get a good one. And that good one has now gone. And in that 12 months, we've, we've, we've seen, what, eight wins in the league? In total, in 12 months, it's not even one a month. It's pathetic. I underestimated how how inept the board was. Like, I, I knew there were problems, right? Because, you know, I followed this team. I knew there were problems. But just rewind four weeks ago. We we're like, ah, you know, we would like to have somebody in, ideally before the Man United match. And be like, well, at least before the second one. Well, it has to be before the Everton match. We're looking to go into literally another must win. We're running out of must wins here. Or else we're just going down. And th they still don't have somebody in. They're chasing people all across the world that are glamour appointments. Ronnie, one thing I saw that really disturbed me against Everton, and I I'm curious to know, because I think, I, I guess, Connor, I don't know how recently you played, but I think Brownie's <laughs> played more recently than you or I, I think. I'm playing five aside tonight. Watch it. Oh, okay. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, burn it up. Sco <laughs> score You'll score more goals than Patrick Badford will. Um, I felt for the first time that the players weren't playing for each other and some of them were turning on each other. So I saw body language in the side and exchanges going back from, from Furpo to uh, Nyanto a couple of times to Harrison and about in the second half, McKenney, who's been there three, three matches started shouting at people in the midfield, which for me, like not, not great. Right. And uh, I've seen that all year, mate. Right. Have you? Okay. So I'm not at the ground. I don't see it, but it, more from Adam. Seems more toxic it. than usual. <laughs> I, I, it may be so. Maybe maybe it feels toxic because of the result and everything. But I don't mind players giving each other a bollocking. I, I really don't. If they need telling, tell them. Uh, I see Adams doing it a lot. It could be Ailey, it could be Melier, and that's more of a, like a captain role for him. It's interesting that you say lots of doing it. I, I've seen a lot of stuff being made on the you know, the, the fracas just before half time and where they're all pushing each other yeah. and what have you. That's the third game in a row where Adams and McKenney are both on yellow cards and then they can't touch another player. It happened at Old Trafford. It happened at home. It's now happened at Everton. Yeah, We can't keep playing games of football with our two centre midfielders both walking a tightrope. They couldn't do anything again for the rest of the game. And right. I love the fact that we're getting stuck into an everything, but... If you're going to get a yellow card, at least get one for leaving someone on someone. Not, not for just pushing and shoving and throwing a handbag somewhere. Brownie, I didn't even feel like it was... like I liked the handbagging against Man United. 
I didn't like it this time because it felt like it just felt like anger and frustration. It didn't yeah. feel like it control. almost felt like futility. It felt, it felt like Adams was like, all right, we're playing crap again. We're going to drop a result again. I, and now this guy's standing over me. Nah, you know, like not going to let this guy. And McKenny came in from all the way out. It was it was literally like there was an opportunity now for me to throw hands. So that they didn't. That, that, that was that was the worst thing he could have done because that right. got, that got the Goodison crowd up as well. Not only did it get him into the yellow card, but it got the Goodison crowd it, up. It seemed that, like a, a, a futility and a frustration fight as opposed to a, like I'm going to stand up for my guy. It was just like no, we're going to have to take it uh, take it from this, take it from that. I'm not taking it at this level. And it, it, for me, that was that was it was depressing. I wasn't excited after that. I was just like this it, isn't going to end well. That feeling like like don't get me wrong. If we win, we're probably having a different conversation. Yeah, but maybe. I love the players. Won since I love the players September. backing each other up. I love the players getting stuck in everything. It just felt like a bit of out. Of, it just felt out of control a little bit. Yeah. It just felt frustration, and I get that the fans are frustrated. We shout. The players are frustrated. But it's just the third game, and and Adams and McKenney are pivotal in the in our team. The two good players, and for us, two centre midfielders to not then be able to make a tackle in a game like that for the third game in a row. It annoyed me. It, yep. it started to annoy me, but that might be just be where we are. It might be that everything's starting to annoy me now. As, well, they're going to get yeah. soft bookings too. I mean, McKenny's come in, picked up three yellow cards, right? So, so now referees are going to be looking for it every time he does anything. Is that what it is? Three already? I, I, it may be just be two. Yeah, that's what I mean. The three games: Man United at home, Man United away, and the Everton game. It can no longer make a tackle and. Like I said, again, I'll reiterate, it might be just because of where we are. If we're seventh in the league, we love our players getting stuck in like that. But the way the yeah. position we're in at the minute, we can't be giving stupid yellows. And I'm not saying that it's their fault for where we are or anything like that. I'm just no, saying it's a cu- accumulation of things le- recently that it, as fans, it it's just starting to really annoy us all. Everything's just... An, I mean, no shot on target. The biggest game no. of the season for the position we're in and we're not mustering a shot on target. It's got to be one of the worst performances um, I've seen in a long time that it was, it was rudderless. It was toothless. I didn't think there was any fight to be honest. I thought, you know, apart from that little scuffle, it was bang average Everton. Everton were awful. Everton yeah. bang yeah, average. Yeah, below yeah. It, below it, there, was, it was, it, there was no quality in the game. And to me, I mean, an Everton fan said it to me, um, the other day he said look mate sorry about that it's shit the position you're in and I went hey don't think you're out of it yet because you know if you start in getting Bournemouth in, and you know Southampton winning let's say if Southampton beat us who knows what's going to happen on that day um, but um, anyway the, the, by the by the point is um, it, for me on the day it was who wanted it more that's well, how mate, bad we are Connor we're getting apologies from Everton fans yeah that's how bad it is that's but, another but, thing that's annoying me I mean we, I came, we, we came away from Forest and Forest were awful and yeah, they were beat. awful. But they, but they, Forest, Forest, awful. Forest knew they were awful as well. Villa were awful. There's yeah, been so many true. teams that have been awful against Leeds, and 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 it, it just gets to a point. It get honestly, Brownie. I'm at a point now where I just have no. I, I can't. I actually can't see us winning another game. That's how bad it is right now. I feel I can't remember even the, the last win so long ago, and it was it was lucky we got back into that one. Let's be completely honest. It was so lucky. Um, and this is football. Things can change on a dime, right? Like, it, but like, we have to. Know, Gabe, Gabe, I don't know if it can because the frame, the, the, how toxic it is from board level down. Now they've not brought five of the choices in. Clearly, four or five of the choices in. Benitez apparently is now declaring himself interested on Sky Sports. So was Sam Allardyce. Um, everybody, so, yeah, everybody's like, declared, you know, and, and all this sort of stuff. But it doesn't feel. It feels like it needs to be a good environment from top down to be able to properly work, to be able to, you know, be fruitful. And and I just feel at the minute that it is just so toxic that whoever comes in has got a poison chalice. I really well, think here's that. why I agree with you. Know you. Oh, me the on, most? Do you know what's annoyed me the most in the last few weeks? And you might laugh. It's not not, not annoyed me the most, but. What stood out to me the most with this board, they were so close to appointing that ex-IX manager. Yep. And they, they just bowed to fan pressure. The only reason he didn't get the job is because of how vocal fans on social media. He Which is so side. pathetic, Brownie. He's That's the side. worst. He's like... pitched, he's, he's pitch side. Shrouder, he's pitch side. Brownie, can you imagine running the club level, that way? Yeah, from board level, how can you be swayed that much? How can you believe in your plan that much? And then, oh, the fans on social media aren't happy about it, so we 
we, we better back out of this. I, I, I don't get how someone so wealthy and so good at business can be making decisions like that. So what happens now if, if this guy see you, what if all the fans on social media start going, oh, we don't want him, we don't want him, and they're not going to appoint him? At, at what point did the board go, this is who we want, this is what's happening? It's our club. It, in their point, it's our club. We'll run it how we want. And Brownie, also every every week they take to dawdle around. Every week this job becomes less appealing because we're not winning. We're not any more competitive. The other teams are winning, and no, like the manager would have less time. I, I think my point on anything can change is that yeah, there is a potentiality somewhere, but it's becoming more and more remote that somebody comes in and just focuses on the job at hand and somehow manages to squeeze out points. But and you know in the comments and I know what you're what some of you are trying to say that oh it was bad that we won at Liverpool. But like then we'd be on three wins. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like well, it, it's it's so bad right now and I I want so desperately to find positives. Like I I went into the match data like determined to find something that was positive. And all I could find was, well, I think it's a small miracle that Weston McKenney finished with an 83% pass completion, it which is awful. so dire. It was all, it was all, there was no positives. It was <laughs> awful. It, 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 was, it was as bleak as it has been this season. Yeah. Yeah. And it feels like that now. It really feels difficult to, to, to grab anything from it. Um, I mean, can you imagine Ellen Mode on Saturday if we go 1 0 down? And there's no one left to left to point at anymore. You know what I mean? Like it's there. Nobody will be exempt from the toxic, whatever we want to call it. No, it'll will be, be there. Ellen Road. It'll be there. He loves it. I mean, awesome. I mean, the awesome. result awesome. from the other game. It. The Everton result was bad enough, but the results in the Premier League and the other games around it just like it. It just it was like that nail, another the nail coffin. in the coffin. It. it Southampton going to Chelsea and winning, Bournemouth going to Wolves. I mean, the whole of the bottom, all the bottom three won. I mean, but Brownie, but Brownie, we're not winning games, so at some point that's going to come around and bite us on the ass. There's going to be a turnaround in results at some point because we are not winning games. We're not, you know, it's so rare that we're getting any form of points on the board now. That for me, and this was yeah, the was, time to do it. This yeah, was the it, time yeah, to yeah, do it, and we yeah, couldn't and it was a, do it. And it was a crap weekend, of course it was, mate. But for me, that was coming. That was coming. Yeah. I mean, the Fulham game coming up in the FA Cup, you can still go online and buy a ticket. Mm. When, when when was the last time a fan could log on minutes after they go on sale and go and buy a ticket? Mm. I True. can't remember. The, the, the what, was it like, what was it like in the crowd, Brownie? What was it like at Goodison? Toxic. Was it? Yeah. I thought it would have been. Toxic. Toxic comment said it's toxicity started with guys like you though. Yeah, we're the ones. <laughs> yeah, but that's the mentality of fans. Though that is the mentality. It's nobody else's fault. It's fans' fault. Yeah, it's everybody else's fault. It's it's everybody else's people fault like people, people, people like him are just like angry, angry men who just need. And I get to that. Blame. We can, we can be angry. Everybody's got a right to be angry. But I mean, toxic. How? how she so can't because you can't talk about the game. You're not allowed. If you put it on a platform, you can't do it. You're not allowed. You need to watch that game from nine for, for ninety minutes. Pay to go and watch it, and you're yeah. coming, coming away. They weren't even getting clapped. And um, then no I mean, it, I mean, it's, 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 it's you can always say players will put an effort in. They'll wear the badge on the shirt. They'll play with pride. They'll do this. They'll do that. There was. There, I can't. Describe, there was nothing. Yeah. Stephen uh, Stephen says, "What are your thoughts on um, Orta? Presuming meant inside the stadium because outside the stadium was last year at Brentford when he was telling everybody that if I wasn't here, you wouldn't be in the Premier League." Um, when is he talking about that, the sack the board thing that uh, after Bournemouth? That yes. Yeah, so, well, well, that was that was yeah, and that was that was after the Brentford game last season when he was giving it to fans, um, and then obviously we saw at the end of the game when he's pointing at Jesse Marsh and almost like I've done this, I'm here. Then obviously the, like he's, I mean, I put it on my Twitter. He's smiling almost. He's got a little wry smile and he's doing that to the Leeds fans who are away at Goodison. I, 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 I. I wait, wait, that was at Goodison. 
Yeah, I was at the weekend. Yeah, he was doing that. I mean, I can, yeah. I, it's hard with a still picture. I've seen the picture. He could have just been itching his ear. I, I'm, <laughs> Fair play, yeah, mate. He genuinely could. He could have just <laughs> yeah, been he could, well, yeah. And I'd like to think that that's all he was doing. Or so. That's talked to me off the edge, Brownie, actually. That was a he's got, he's got, he's, Brownie's, the thing is, he's got form. And that's why the problem is he's got form. If it was an isolated incident, you think to yourself, nah, well, maybe he was just. But when he's dipping his head and he's looking at the fans with a little yeah. smile. I get that. I mean, this like the end of last year, if Burnley beat Newcastle, we were down. Yeah, I know. I know. We were done. Um, we... Yeah, the, his anger has clouded up his internet feed. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, it, the thing is, Connor, yeah, I, and, and, um, oh, oh. <laughs> you're right, you're back. Brownie. Or, Victor Ord is interfering with your internet, Brownie. <laughs> you swear <laughs> just staring at us. <laughs> You're, uh, you're, you're, yeah, you're, right. you went, mate. You went. <laughs> yeah. By the way, I normally don't turn red in the face. I'm literally this angry. <laughs> it's, it's. I don't know how to handle another relegation scrap with this team. You what were you saying, Brown? Anyway, before I to cut you high five. <laughs> that's, 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 yeah. No, I'm saying like the timing of the sacking last year was well. It was this week. It was like the end of February, wasn't it? And yeah. as a club, we've gone nowhere. So I, I'm not sure this cupping of the ears and this, yeah, sack the board and all this that he's coming out with, what what is it else is he expecting? Like, I, I'm not, I'm yeah. not, I, I'm at a bit of a loss because we've gone backwards. We the, the final day of the season, we went in the relegation zone to Brentford. If Newcastle hadn't have won at Burnley, we'd have gone down, regardless of what we did. Yeah, I, I don't know what he's bragging for. I don't know, like, like he treats our fans as though we should feel lucky to be here every step of the way, and that that they've single handedly gifted us Premier League football. And now, now we're getting into a time where I'll, anybody I'll, I'll, with a Twitter I'll, account I'll, can write this I'll, long thread of inner workings at the club. And as long as they have a couple hundred followers, people will retweet it. This is how toxic the environment has come, and it's like. I don't even know, like Brown, you're a season ticket holder. How are you going to show up uh, uh, against Southampton and Ellen Road? I'll tell you what, talking of season ticket holders, I'll tell you what is interesting. The season ticket renewals haven't even come out yet. And they're, they're normally out by now. Season ticket renewals, I mean, they're petrified. Imagine the, I mean, it's just from top to bottom. It's just a mess. I mean, you, you comment then about, oh, it feels like we're lucky to have him and we're in the Premier League because of him. We went up with a net with a positive net spend. We went up not spending money. Yep. This summer just gone has been funded by Phillips and Rafinha. Yep. I'm not a lot. We went up because of one person, an absolute genius, who then in the next season somehow got Luke Ayling, Stuart Dallas, Forshaw and Co to ninth. I, I still don't know how that happened. I was going to say that to you in our thread the other right. day that I now have a new appreciation for hit up uh, for somehow getting a tune out of those and convincing the fan base, by the way, that Jack Harrison and Bamford are a couple of good matches away from being world-class players. I mean, Bamford got into the England team. <laughs> he played for England. That's how, that's the level that he got players to. And then in that summer, not backed. And then we were in a season. And I, I, and I will say that's the second season with Bielsen in the Premier League. It was, a fa- it was a joke. It was a farce. We were playing with, like I said, the previous times, Luke Haley and I are centre half and Jamie Shackleton right back. Haley was Premier pulling centre half again the other in day. In the Premier League. And then 12 months down the line, people are shocked that we're 19th. Mm. It was, um, it's been coming, I'll, I'll, it's I'll, been I'll, coming I'll, a mile off. Yeah, has, mate. Uh, Alex said, uh, Bamper's right foot broke and you're a professional. At least six matches where he could have made a difference with results. The, Alex, top comment. Uh, <sighs> watch, again, watching his body language all night. Him throwing his arms around and whining and crying about not getting the service he wants. Gets a great ball down the middle and doesn't even get his foot on it. Skips off the side of his... This is a Premier League striker. And another thing that we've strikers, I'm not going to... I'm not... I'm not hammering the player at all, right? If we had 35 million to spend in the mm. position we are in, 
We are, do not need to spend it on a 20 year old. We needed a proven goal scorer in the Premier yep. League. Yep. That is not me hammering Rua. Rutter. I think he'll, he'll have a, a, an unbelievable career. He's clearly Probably a great him. investment for the future. But yeah. you're right. And we yeah, all well, said this, right? Like, why no spend the money on this player right now? There's going to be no good in the Champions, Championship. Yep. He'll, he'll probably be gone. After, probably, I don't know if it'll be a release clause or what. But <laughs> the relegation clause. Right? Million, yeah, the, sorry, the relegation clause. He's got 35 million to spend. Why, why, why are we not spending on an experienced Premier League striker? Uh, and this is the thing that this this group talks about their long term strategy, their their vision, their mold. The mold doesn't work. The, the mold does not work. Like uh, selling us on this idea that we're going to be able to get uh, Real Vallecano's manager. We're going to be. Uh, we're going to get these pie in the sky managers coming because we're Leeds United, and that you know we can spend thirty five million. And here's the thing: I like Brendan Brendan Aronson. To spend that kind of money on Brendan Aronson rather than, and he's 22. Again, another kid who's probably going to have a really good career, right? Instead of buying Premier League proven characters, like it, it's just, it just doesn't make sense. I mean, no. And on, on the flip side, and again, I'm not having a go at Roy Root here at all. If you're spending 35 million on a striker, he has to start every game. Yep. Yeah, he does. He does. And he has to score. He, he can't be playing yeah. 10 or 15 minutes here and there. Phil Owens just put 35 million. He's close. He's close to getting Tammy Abraham. He's <laughs> right. He's right. He went for 40 million. He's right. Why That's are you buying so players for the future when the future could be Plymouth away next season? And by the way, Brownie, again, not having to go at the player, a player who doesn't have a goal scoring track record. No, he doesn't. Like, I don't, I don't think he's a center forward. He's clearly a winger. But also, also another thing that we haven't taken into consideration Hoffenheim haven't played since about November. So you bring him in. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's not only the fact that he's not probably ready for the Premier League and he's only a young lad and he's got you know potential but it's the fact that Rutter's coming in barely playing any football and I'll be honest he looks like he's barely played any football at the minute he looks quite unfit um, I mean Michael Pollard said Mele can we talk about him oh. he's not even getting the basics right why is Scoobs persisting with Jack in the 10 role I mean, <clears throat> did, I'm not going uh, to have a go at Scoob. But no, I'm not, I'm not. no, 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 no. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's not Scoob's fault. But we. Well, I think. I think talking about Jack is key, and then talking about Elan Mele at the minute. So, which one of you wants to fire off, Brownie? Do you want to go? Well, you will know my thoughts on Elan Mele. I get in my WhatsApp groups with my mates and yourself and fans. I, I've been hammered for years about Mele. And me and Harrison. So it's the perfect question. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I've been hammered for. When he came on the scene at Arsenal in that FA Cup game, his distribution was unbelievable. He was picking out players on the halfway line on the chest. He looked like he could play centre midfield. He's kicking. Kind of about to be sick. He's kicking. <laughs> he's, he's not great. Mm. Every time he gets the ball, I'm petrified. I've seen the guy kick balls out for corners. He's yeah. an unbelievable shot stopper. Unbelievable shot stopper in front of goal. He's made some big saves and and he is young. I mean, I think he's one of the quickest players in the Premier League to reach 100 games or whatever, or 100 appearances for the club yep. um, as a goalkeeper. And he does face a lot of shots. But my word, there's been some some howlers in that collection of shots he's yep. faced. And, and more so at his near post. His near post is so vulnerable for me. Um, I'm not a keeper. I don't confess to try and be a keeper. I'm a, I'm a center half. I would have screamed in his face there's a good after that goalkeeper goal. There, but his near post is so suspect. And I mean, the goal at the weekend. There's nobody even in the box. I, I get that he might be edging out to try and take, but there's nobody even in there. I, and again, he makes some really good saves. He's an unbelievable shot stopper. But again, does it come back to the box? Has he got anybody to to challenge him? Hmm. Melier plays. Melier, the position we're in. Melier plays just like Bamford. Yep. Bamford starts. There's nobody to challenge Melier. We wanted a keeper. We brought in Robles. Is he a number one goalkeeper in the Premier League? No. It's There's about nobody. the environment at the club where they like honestly. And I'm not saying that like listen. I want like a a John Sitton to come in the door and shout at <laughs> how everyone's a disgrace. But I think the culture of the club is is too loose. I, I really do. Like uh, asking about. What like why Skubala threw out Jack Harrison to, to play you know the number ten role? 
has Jack Harrison been accountable for his? So he's not even hot and cold, per- Harrison. He's lukewarm <laughs> and freezing, on that, though, Harrison. On that, which is last interesting. Kind, last kind. <laughs> which is interesting. And this is what I kind of said. And I'm not blaming Scuba. He's been given the job. And obviously, your mate, Amras, what, the Amras. assistant. <laughs> from, yeah, him. Hey, can I just give people in the comment yeah. section credit? Oh, for don't like, start on him. No, no, no. no I'm not going to no. start. I'm going to give people our, our so, the subscribers credit for roasting me and asking me if he'd, he'd bag my misses. That There were some great roasts because I did right. go overboard. You are Just on that, I said at the time, when a manager goes, your backroom staff goes with it because you need a new voice, new ideas, mm-hmm. new game plans, new tactics, because them plans clearly didn't work, right. hence why the manager lost his job. Right. Mm. He was Jesse Marsh was playing Harrison in the 10 and Aronson outright for the most of the start of the season, when when them two played, and there was one game, I can't remember which it was, but they switched because at half time they asked if they could switch. Harrison is a winger, Aronson is a 10, but they were Ar- Harrison was playing in the 10. We are still seeing that being used. And Jesse Marsh is gone. So we've not mm. changed a tactic. We're keeping the same one. It's just a different person telling him what to do. Yeah, what so if Scoop says he wants to play when, a different way? They say no, goes, you know? Like, what's going to happen? Nothing. I, I don't... Watching the games, Man United seemed to be a bit more intensity at Old Trafford. Was that just because it was at Old Trafford against Man United? But watching the games, I don't really see much difference to Jesse Marsh's team. No, well, and they, they can't really. I, I mean, again, like, what's Kubala do going to do? Say, hey, I may only be here for three, four, five weeks. Who knows? But I'm going to have us play a completely different way. Uh, like, he'd be insane to do that. And uh, on top of that... He has introduced more work, but when you go a whole season drilling in a specific style of play into these players and trying to make it like second nature, a system that, by the way, hasn't worked, um, expecting them to be able to flip the switch and play with each other, it's it's chaotic. It's why you need to, you know, have a manager lined up when you sack your manager. It's it's one of the again, it's it's why this search doesn't make sense. It's why it's an absolute negligence to take this long. On the flip side, though, South haven't, Southampton haven't appointed a manager and they went and won. So are we having this conversation because of the result or because of the situation? Well, I think that meant that the guy in the interim, and again, this is not this is no shade on Skubala, but he's closer to qualification than Skubala is to manage a Premier League side. You know, And he wants the job at Southampton and he's not been ruled out of it. So I think that the situations are a little bit different. I, I think... Asking Skubala to fill in, I think it was clear that they were like, "Okay, fill in this week," and then they're like, "Oh, how about next week?" Oh, well, you actually did all right. We'll see how you do in the Everton game. That's shambolic. <laughs> I, can't, I can't believe that these guys own and run a Premier League club. That's Paul, where we are. Isn't it? That is should where we, we are. Should we just read Paul's comment out here? Who would yeah, have thought on. that we'd have relied so much on uh, Rodrigo, start Rutter, Harrison? And Bamford deserve dropping. Get Rafa in. Yeah, that's Rafa Benitez. Um, but who do we play shame, it? instead it's of Patrick shame. Bamford now? It's a shame that um, yeah Rodrigo oh, got Rodrigo. injured because I think that eight minutes together Accrington would have would have really propelled us up the league. <laughs> him, and, him and Bamford playing together for them eight minutes. Oh, I don't, hey, Brownie, don't forget that touch Patrick Bamford had in the Accrington game though. Oh yeah, I, I think I think that would have really helped us. He's back. <laughs> <before, laughs> <laughs> Jesus. What on earth was he doing on the pitch at Accrington Stanley? Um, Johnny says the guilt that we felt for wanting Bielsa um, has been made far worse by Otter's incompetence and he insults Leeds fans. Yeah. Disgraceful. Yeah. Um, it's almost got to a point, it's almost got to a point now where I mean, I wanted Bielsa to to leave at that point. Brownie, I'm not going to double down. Me and you know that. We were talking about this for, well, about to, well. Uh, still talking about it, mate. I'll still yeah. talk about it. Yeah, yes. Yeah. About 18 months ago, you know, and I look at it now and it's actually, you know, and the reason I wanted, it was never said from a place of malice with Bielsa. It was what he's done is incredible. And, and I want us to build on that now. Let's build on someone similar to Bielsa, just a disciple coming in, someone where we don't have to transition 
to this ridic- ridiculous style of football where the players aren't going to understand it a year down the line. I know that's all well said in hindsight, but just transitioning simply to someone who plays a possession-based football and the players will be able to understand those notions a little bit easier. For us to go so far away from that and so far away in terms of where the club is right now to what it was when Bielsa was here, I'm almost I'm at a point right now where I'm actually thinking to myself, do you know what? And it was a realisation I had on the phone with Mel Man the other day. Because Mel Man was the same headspace as me. And we were having a chat and I said, you know what, Dad? Right now, if you actually... Because in my head, leads are going down. So if you're actually to give me that thought process a year ago and to, you know, to say, we'll go down with Bielsa, I'd almost just be like, do you know what, I'd take that. And I'd take that right now. I'd take that really? right now. And I, I, and I know that, yeah, because I know that's going backwards because... because Bielsa, Connor, he was not gonna. He was not gonna stay anyway. Remember? Like no. Was, well, 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 well. Apparently, well, yeah. Apparently, he wasn't going to stay. I'm gonna, gonna stay. jump in. I'm gonna jump in because if I see one more comment that we were shipping five four. Oh man, it, it's like a DJ. <laughs> Bradley, you skipped again, man. <laughs> Tell you what. Start over. It's, I'll tell you, if it you might see one more comment, what? it keeps cutting me out. Right. <laughs> oh. Oh, this is, this is amazing. Oh, he's, he's getting frustrated. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to throw something in a minute, I tell you. Right. So, Man City, Man City put seven past us. They put four past Real Madrid. Right. Do you know the team that we played against Man City with? Tyler Roberts was in the 10 that night. Jamie Shackleton was playing. We had Diego Luente and uh, Luke Ailey in centre-halves. The, 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 the midfield two was Forshaw and Dallas away at Man City. Right. To, to be keep it to seven was probably good. It could have been 15 that night. We then played Arsenal. Right, I, think, I think the argument isn't... Hang on, hang on. I know there we are some people. Oh, go on. We then played Arsenal <laughs> with six teenagers. We were during COVID. We shouldn't, that game shouldn't even have been on. Our team was ravaged with COVID. We had six teenagers. One of them now plays in League Two. The other one's at League One. Tottenham did us for four, and that was the day that we got sacked. Tottenham did us for four, right? They were the games that we got done in. This season, Man City still... That, that, that same season, Man City came, still scored four. We still got done three by Chelsea. Nothing Brown, this season, Brownie. What was your what was your what was your contingency plan then, mate? In your head, in your head, right, right when Bielsa left, because let's say the summer he was he was going to leave. You know, we, we, well, like Gabe was saying, if he was going to leave in the summer, this is what I'm talking about with the overarching yeah. point of the board, because the board have gone for you. Know, they've been talking to Marsh behind behind uh, Bielsa's back. So in, in the back of your head, when you're thinking, well, our director of football, who's got all the power at the football club, be speaking to someone for two years behind Bielsa's back. So clearly, with 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 acumen, this is going to work. For two years, he's been speaking to him, so this is surely going to work. He did less than a year went, later. Went, less than a year later, they've had to sack him. Yes, so exactly. Me, exactly. So, so what, ball, so Brownie, what would you, football. what would you have done then? What would you have done then in terms like, of style listen, of play? What would you have done? Me, for me, it wasn't just the football with Leeds. Think how toxic the club is now. Was yeah. it ever was it ever toxic like that in that three and a half period? It was no. before that. Yeah, before exactly, yeah. and it, it, I get, and it is again now. But in that three and a half period, was there ever toxic? The club was galvanized. Football was enjoyable. The match day experience was enjoyable. You were going into games thinking we might get beat, but we're, we're going to have a go. We might win. So was, there, was there always going to be a problem after Bielsa then? Always. I think following that was going to be hard for whoever it was. Yeah, yeah. And I f- and fair play to Jesse Marsh for trying to follow it because I don't like to mention these on this show. But remember when Alex Ferguson left, it took manager, it took manager, it took manager to get anywhere close. And it's only just happening now when Ted Hag's got them playing a little bit. But yeah, they're, yeah. They're, it, I'm not putting that in that likeness. But for us as a club, we hadn't won anything since Howard Wilkinson. Mm. And he was the first manager to make us to win, to win anything. He gave us success. Now, the way that board handled that sacking was a disgrace. They just chucked him on the scrap heap like he didn't matter. Yeah. The soul was taken out of the club. 
our identity. If you asked me now, coming out of Goodison, how, how how do Leeds play? I couldn't tell you. I couldn't tell you our identity. I couldn't tell you sometimes how we've lined up, what the formation is. I, you just, it just looks like there's 11 players chucked on a pitch. Whether people liked that style of football or not, you could tell what was happening. 12 months later, we're 19th. We haven't won for three months. The club is toxic. The ground's toxic. I can't remember the last football game I went to where I've actually enjoyed it. Probably Accrington Stanley because it, it was a good day out. That yeah. was the last time I'd gone to a football game and really enjoyed was it. Was it actually a good day out? It was great, mate. Yeah. It reminded Sorry, me of League One days. <laughs> I just, I just that, can't remember that, your messages. You want need soon, mate. All you want need reminding. I'm still just that, having no roof. All them feelings have gone. It's, it's not coming back like people say. It's not happening. It was once in some people's lifetimes. Some people hadn't seen us in the Premier League in their lifetime because it was that long since we've been in it. So the new generation of fan, that was all they were used to. And so, and this is now what we're left with. So, Ronnie, I know the comments wind you up, but I think I think where they come from is, is this. Have you ever had a, a family member who was engaged or dating someone that you really thought was great for them? And then they they treated them horribly and dumped them. And ever since they just dated horrible people after, it's almost like, it feels like that where it's sort of like it's all everything you're saying is valid. It's not invalid. It's all true. But like, unfortunately, this is what we have. I don't know what we're supposed to do with this. You know, if that board can sack the guy who redeveloped the training ground filled out stadiums because let's be right we all talk about filling stadiums you could walk up to Ellen Road on a Saturday before he came and buy a ticket yeah you could yeah. you've now got waiting lists the the board one about developing the ground you're in the Premier League mm. and they just sacked it off for what for, yeah. for what yeah. what we're here going into March in the relegation zone with no manager hmm yeah. Mm. Yeah. It's a yeah. horrible place to be. I agree. Yeah. And and that that's for me why this is on the board. They they gave Jesse Marshall over a hundred million, but was making someone else play with players that are now in the champion. Lewis Bate is at Oxford in League One. Yeah. Shackleton's at Millwall on loan. They were starting. Although I keep getting I keep getting tweets about Lewis Bate hitting hitting a nice goal. No, but I think the more depressing, the more for me, for me, the for me, the more depressing thing is we're going back for me to the championship and where it's going to be the exact same scenario where the turnover of player is going to be mass when we go down. That starting eleven, there's going to be none of them left. And and you know, a lot of people would turn around and say, Well, fair enough, there shouldn't be a lot of them left. But Ailing will still be there. Coops will still be there. Dallas, Dallas will still Dallas will still be there. For sure will still be there. Bamford will be there. Probably Strike still might be there. And then you'll have Gelhart coming back. Greenwood will still be there. And it's just it's from where do you know do you know I always do you know I said when does that happen? When does a club go down and sell everyone? It doesn't I, happen. Okay, okay. Well, okay. Well, out of that starting, well, that start. Let's say that starting eleven. When I went through it the other day, and I picked out fourteen or fifteen that I'd be stunned if they were still with us. Let's take I don't know three or four off that. You're still looking at a churn of 10, 11 players that are going. And that's normal. Burnley probably got rid of about eleven. But when I, I don't trust, it's the release clause as well, Connor, that you're talking about. We have a lot of new players, so we don't have like. A lot of new players would have come in with their contracts being negotiated with a release clause, given where in the summer as well. Because, I mean, in the summer, by the way, because we nearly went down. So those players that came in in the summer as well will have had relegation clauses in the contracts as well. So the, you know, I, I, I don't foresee Leeds United keeping hold of a lot of the players, and I think a lot of the young guns are going to come back. And Brown, it's going to be like we were just in a dream for three years, and we've just woken up and we're back to where we were. And that's the depressing thing about it, mate, because it's going to be the same older heads who are still going to be around the place, the same and younger that, boys. That echoes my point. That echoes yeah. my point yeah. perfectly, that comment there. We were in a dream. Yeah, yeah. The football we were watching was a dream. Going to games was a dream. But Brownie, they could have got... They they always had a task of replacing Biel, so that was always yeah. going to happen. It was always going to happen. No, I didn't, and I didn't trust them to do it. But I, no, I don't they've, trust them. They've, no, no. They've, I don't trust them to do it, and and I don't trust them to pick a manager. Now they, they're scraping the barrel, and that's no disrespect to whoever comes in, but it wasn't their first mm. choice. No, no. I, I they fluked Bielsa. 
because all their other appointments were garbage. Yeah. Ronnie, there's an interesting comment in here. It said that they, they sacked Bielsa because they wanted Marsh. Do you think it's do you think there's something to that that Victor yeah. Orta, Orta was like, I want Marsh now, let's sack him now? Yeah. Yeah, that's, well, that's shocking. What, that's, that's, that's what happened. Like Connor oh. said, they were talking to Marsh behind Bielsa's back for months. I mean, we were going after Brendan Aronson in the January transfer window before with Bielsa at the club. <laughs> Come on. Don't need to be a rocket scientist to work out who was behind the transfer. It, it, it certainly wasn't Bielsa. Bielsa didn't go, oh, I want Brendan Aronson. Mm. Oh, come on. I, you really think that's that's the case? I mean... What, do you think Bielsa went to the board and went, I want Brendan Aronson? Not for $35 million or how or much they spent on him, but I don't at all think it's... Given the, uh, the way he played, especially the first half of our season, the energy levels, I don't... It's not inconceivable to me that Marcelo Bielsa would have rated a 21-year-old Brendan Aronson. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, uh, I think that we have a little bit of recency bias when it comes to Brendan Aronson. Yeah, he's been poor the second half of the season, but first half he was really good. And I, I, it's hard well, for me to see that, especially came, with this. He still style came play. in the summer. He still came in the summer. No, I, I, true, true. And and I don't think he's justified his fee. Let me be very clear. But I, I don't know. I think that. It, also, do we do I believe the narrative that all Bielsa wanted was Dan James? It's hard for me. Yeah, to say. it's like don't get me wrong. He, he made some. I'll never understand why he persevered with Tyler Roberts, but he got more right than he got wrong whilst watching Leeds. I gave Connor a welfare check of the mid midweek. Yeah, I appreciate that. I appreciate yeah, that. Like, going back <laughs> to the point. going back to the thing, it, the last few years did feel like a dream, and and we are now in start reality. Going back to the original comment about who would go and who wouldn't, many teams go down and. <laughs> First of all, you go down in the championship with a potload of money. And then if you are going to sell them players, you're going to have a whole load of money more. So you're going to go into the championship with a lot of money if you do have to sell. Like these players that we're selling on about selling, they're not going to be going for, for like 500 grand. But do I you mean, trust this group you trust to do something though, good with it? You, like you, that, you that's trust, my concern. You trust this lot? I don't. That's my problem. I don't trust them at all. Look, the couple of the comments coming in. Imagine this squad now with Bielsa. Yeah, you're not 19th, and I will die on that hill. You would, we would not be 19th. In we, no way would we be 19th. So no, I don't trust the board at all. They have massively messed up the last 12 months. And and like I say, we've gone into just we're going into Everton and Southampton who were the two teams that were fighting relegation with without a manager. Yeah. Well, yeah, what, 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 what would, what would you thought? I mean, like if we're just looking at the, at the managers who were, who were linked to Leeds, obviously Javi Gracia was ex Malaga, ex Watford. He kept Malaga up, kept Watford up. He's been heavily linked today. He's been cut. Um, I think it's one to four now, whatever it is. And then apparently you're getting Rafa Benitez. Uh, expressing on Sky Sports and Talk Sport that he'd, that he'd like the job. Uh, if if you're to have an ideal out of those two, uh, I mean, obviously Gra- uh, Gracia is, is managing the Premier League before. Is Nuno out of it now, Connor? Just completely. Yeah, Nuno. Nuno looks like he's out of it. Yeah, um, when it comes to the the you know the Sky Bet stuff. Um, I mean, uh, are we looking at Benitez? Do we think? Is the preferential? I mean, this Garcia guy. I mean, he got Watford to 11 fan to an FA Cup final. So he, he's not a mug. But it's just the mere fact that he wasn't our first choice, second choice, third choice, or even Same our Same with fourth. Rafa, though, isn't it? Same with exactly. Rafa. And, and like I said earlier on the show, the, the ex-Ajax boss, he looked nailed on to get the job and they just bowed to, to fan pressure. It's just not a strong boardroom, is it? What boardrooms do, do you know of that would go, oh, hang on. Maybe maybe we, we, we can't hire this guy. I know he's at the ground today. I know he's flown him over. We've put him up. We've took him to the game. But there's some fans on social media don't want him. So we'll, we'll scrap all our plans. It, it's just, there's just no thought process to it all. But between Benitez and Garcia, I mean, you flip a I can't see. I, I can't see Benitez, can you? I just, I just can't see that happening. I can't see that happening. I was very pro Benitez for a while, but I've thought more about it. And honestly, like one thing I do know, he's a horrific man manager. Like 
doesn't communicate with the players like and with this group of players this group this sensitive snowflake group of players like i, I wonder if it would just be re really bad <laughs> <laughs> thank you for the laugh chris um mm -hmm. I, I mean yeah I, I would say at this point fine either or uh, nuno yeah. was my guy for this team at this position in the table but obviously it seems like he's we don't well, want to pay. We're, we're clutching at straws. Yeah, they've just got to pick a straw and get on with it. I think. I think. I think Otto's, Otto's ego is too big to have someone like Benitez. And... Unbelievable that he could. That what take us down. That Jesse, not Jesse. Sorry, the Javi Garcia guy. He, he went into Watford knowing the situation that they're fighting, yeah, yeah. They're not fighting center. Yeah. It does scream a yes, man. Yep. Just scream a little puppet who we can put on our strings and play about with, which I'm sorry to say I felt like Jesse Marsh was as well. I agree with you now, Brownie. I think we disagreed on, on this in the beginning, but a, a number of weeks ago, we started talking about, is, was Marsh like the guy that they could just give crap on a plate to and he would say it's it's the nicest looking steak he's ever been fed? <laughs> and it does seem like that now, that, that, that the appointment wasn't about a style of playing, obviously not. It wasn't about the, the advanced analytics. For a while, I could see the argument, right? Because I got into the analytics and I don't think I could see the forest through the trees on that. Um, and it does seem like it was a yes man appointment, which is just such a terrible way to run a football club. It's just woeful. I mean, the guy here, I've seen reports coming out that he's, he's open to a short term contract. I mean, what, what are we trying to achieve here? If we're going short term, then. Is he the man for short term? I think we just need a, a manager to have in to help us survive. The way I see it, we've got 15 games left. And we, need to, we need to win six. Yeah. You need to win six games out of 15 to give yourself any the chance team, whatsoever. See, Brown, see, Brownie, this is why my head's just gone. Because I, I literally, and I'm not, I promise you I'm not being dramatic. I promise you. I cannot see where this next win comes from with this side. So I'm like, if, if we're Saturday. looking... Saturday. <laughs> Southampton not winning back to back games. Well, they might Tell not, you. but we're gonna. Are we, but you could, you know, you can draw as as you said all the time, drawing onto safety or what is it? Drawing. I'm on worried together. that if we beat Southampton, then they'll just go with Skabala for the end of the season. Yeah, I'll give him a four year deal. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, that's that's so reactive though. That is so they reactive, are reactive because they are reactive because they are reactive. the Everton result oh didn't go our way, so we need to. React and get a manager in. Oh no, we beat Southampton, so we'll, we'll go the other way now. There's no plan. There's nothing. And as well, like it looks like it looks like the more the most competitive bottom, you know, six that there's been in a long time. So I mean, even 38, 40 points, it might be, it might be more than that. And it's just at the minute, you just you can't. I mean, like, uh, when you've won four all season, four all season, and you're still getting you know fans to to bump leads up when it comes to results. Talking about Accrington, Cardiff, and Barnsley, that's how bad it is at the minute. It's it's, it, and I just can't see us winning a Premier League game. I just can't see. It. I, I, I don't know who. Okay, fair, fair enough, Southampton. But where's the next one coming from? We're not winning at Chelsea. We're not beating Arsenal away. We're not beating Newcastle. We're not beating Spurs. I'm sorry. It's just the you know Man City. It's just none of this stuff's happened. I just can't see it. I can't see it. We have got some tough games in them 15 games. I, I, Awful. I, I, Brownie, look at the last four. Look at the last four. We said this, Connor, before Christmas when we were getting beat by teams in a, when we weren't winning at Leicester, mm. when we weren't beating Everton, when we were getting nothing at Villa. We weren't beating. Do you know what I mean? Right. I know Fulham are having a good season, but at home, at the early part of the season, a newly promoted team, L, who's not won a, who's not won a game in ten, and you've just put Brighton up there. Brighton, what is a, is a winnable game right now? Come on, Roy Keane, you know he does that. Come on, giving it one of them. Hey, so he says, do me a favor. <laughs> Here's what why uh, another reason why it's it's so harsh. Like for both of you guys, let's say you're the new manager walks in, you have to make changes, right? You have to make changes to, to this team because what we're doing, who we're playing, where we're playing, and then whatever the case is, isn't working. Right, we've not not won a Premier League match since the new year before the new year, right? So, if you do that with this group of players, you could lose the dressing room in a very short period of time. So, like, it's a it's a I can see why there are a bunch of 
coaches maybe that have no interest in this job right now because it it's it's a damned if you do damned if you don't situation i, 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 I kind i get what i hear is it they don't want the lead job or they don't want to work for these absolute clowns I, one and the same has to be they'll have <laughs> reputation they'll have reputation Alter and rad they will because the, I mean, the left hand doesn't know the right hand at times. I mean, you're not telling me a club like the United can't get a manager. It comes down to money again for me. It comes down to money. Rads, yeah, they, wants they out. Pay Rads wasn't one Rads wants out, so what put his money in? 49ers are cut pull control shot, put their money. But they're fighting a losing battle because if they go down, they both lose out massive amounts of money. It, it's yeah. just mental. <laughs> oh, Connor, I'm gonna ask you a question. Christ, you have to. Been quieter. You were, despondent, this one. you were despondent last year. You thought we were down. Yeah. And Bielsa got sacked at this point. Yeah. 12 months on, near enough. We're no manager again. Were you more despondent now for staying up or last year for staying up? Oh, now, mate. I am I am so depressed right now. It's um, I, mean, I can't I can't even tell you that. I feel I feel, I feel empty. I feel empty right now. And I don't know when Bielsa went. I, in my head, I genuinely believe that they might get it right. They might move away a little bit from him, um, but then still do the Bielsaism, still get maybe someone who employed his, you know, way of playing. And then we brought that guy in, and I, I said it on the, I said it on the shows. I, you know, people, so you come back and say, oh, you, you know, it's not hindsight this, hindsight that. It's not. It's true. You can go back and watch it when he had twelve games. I'd come on, and people would be like, he's only had twelve games. He needs a backing in the summer window. Why? Why did he need a backing in the summer window? Why do we need to go out and back him? In those 12 games, we saw nothing. It was Rafinha FC with those 12. If you're, okay, even if it wasn't Rafinha, Jack Harrison, whatever, there's two players. There was no tactical plan. There was no strategy in those 12 games. It was Vibes FC. That's what it was. And he kept us up fine, whatever. But as Brownies quite rightly said, Burnley win on that last day of the season with an interim manager, we go down. It was it was lucky for me. There was nothing there in those last 12 games. And they decided in the summer to go out and give him all that backing based on what? Why couldn't it be, he been an interim manager? And then they get the Bielsa, the Bielsa replacement right, properly right at the end of the year. Put Marsh on a six-month contract. He was only in a he was on, he was sacked from his last job. So we bring him in, you know, give him he all the tools taken in the shot. Look what he said to South, he told Southampton to start off because they wanted to give him a short term. Well, he was in, he's probably, he's probably in a worse position then, wasn't he? He's probably in a worse position now. He's had his time in the Premier League, you know. For, I mean, I couldn't even believe Southampton were approaching him after his record at Leeds. But you know, eleven wins in fifty, eleven points out of fifty-one, two wins in eighteen. The guy is was nowhere near it. There's nowhere near it, and 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 it just it just frustrates me that we stuck with him for so long. So I'm a more despondent brownie, a hundred percent, mate. And and that maybe is. Maybe it maybe it's an indictment on me as a content creator because I got it wrong. But I do you know what I believed I was I was of a point where I would experience three years with Bielsa, I'd loved it. And I thought we we're gonna have a proper plan. Do it go about it the right way. You're right, Brown. If that doesn't get touched on enough, how much they kicked his ass to the curb, you know, when he's crying outside of his house in Weatherby. Leeds fans are there, you know, it, it was a real it was a real bond between Leeds fans and him. They didn't give a shit. They just wanted Marsh in as quickly as possible. And that's no damning indictment on Marsh, by the way. It's the board. Um and we went, we went oh, it was the all, it was all done. It was all done with a black cloud over it. And that's what upsets me most. So yeah, I was probably I'm probably more despondent now because I, I just don't believe in them, them whatsoever. The, you've seen the message from Rad, one of his famous Twitter messages, Radrazani, actually saying that he's he's tried to contact Bielsa several times and not been able to get Can you it. imagine doing that? That 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 sh for me sums up how that delusional was handled. But we went we went from a guy who had PowerPoint presentation on teams, players, to someone who was holding a throwing competition to see who could take a long throw in games. I didn't know that until you guys told me. That, that is how far we have declined in the last 12 months. And <laughs> Did Rasmus win the throwing competition? Because he's been yeah. doing foul throws all day and he finally got called for it. It's unbelievable. <laughs> I just, I mean, you've got, you've got to laugh, otherwise you'll cry. But yeah. I, I, do, will my opinion change if we beat Southampton at the weekend? No, we're in a dogfight. A massive, massive dogfight. 
Mr. Oh, I did, I'd forgot about that. <laughs> uh, we do. Does anybody know if they're still watching the Netflix documentary? To be fair, did I did watch that uh, that documentary. They've turned, just, on, to they've turned no, on to full swing. I, I literally golf. watched it, looking to see. I was like, I wonder what. I'm, this is how like desperate I was to find positives. I was like, let's see if I could find anything and relevant in here. Nope. They're watching reruns of Friends. Um, Graham Barwick says that dressing room needs someone to kick ass. Auto won't want uh, Rafa. Rafa would kick ass. 10th to 13th place finish with Newcastle. Rafa I would think... probably bench Tyler Adams without telling him why, though. <laughs> like, that's like... <laughs> yeah, but the alternative would be having Tyler Roberts back next season in the championship. Yeah, I guess that's probably right. <laughs> <laughs> um, Do Americans want Jesse Marsh for the USMNT? This American doesn't know. Yeah, Leeds Bird Rant says Marsh better not come within ten foot of Ellen Road. It's for me. It's not. Yeah, I don't know. With I mean, Marsh was just. It was almost like a parody for a while. I think, but um, yeah, he just he just was. Ne- it wouldn't should never have been a, an appointment for me. But it is what it is. I don't blame. Obviously, you've got to blame Marsh because of his results. But there was the three Stooges kept him in charge. Right, and you don't really blame him for taking the biggest job of his life, do you? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You know, it's like that film, yeah. Kid President. <laughs> and as well, he, he was, you know, he didn't have a job. He didn't have a job at the time. He'd just been binned off by Leipzig, hadn't he? So it was, yeah, and then Leeds, I've Leeds, read, Leeds I've read, came um, Obviously, throughout the day, I've been reading, trying to read bits about this Garcia. And Troy Dean has um, said himself that Garcia is a disciplinarian. He won't take we need that. nonsense, which, which is a positive. Because um, it does feel like. I don't want this to sound bad on Scoobs. It, it feels like the players are running the show at the minute. Yeah, they are. They are. That, that's why the body language pissed me off, Brownie. It wasn't so much that like I can't understand a player being frustrated or having a shocker or, or, or behaving, but like in this situation where Scubala has no real authority, right? He's just trying to uh, draw the best team he can. You expect your most senior players in the side to be an example. And for me, they were, they were the worst in terms of the body language on the pitch. And for me, that was unacceptable. And that, we need somebody who's going to say, yeah, that stops now. They, they should be playing. It's not just for the, they should be playing for their professional futures. I don't know what they're on about. Like if, if you're uh, if, if you're making the, te- uh, the, uh, the transfer decisions for another club, you can look at Jack Harrison right now. You can look at Patrick Bamford right now, but <sighs> this is going to sound awful. Did I? Oh, sorry, ST. Did I swear? I didn't realize it. No, no. Sorry. The cynic, the cynic in me. Us people in the comments, everyone. We know we need to develop as a club, as players. We need better players. We need a better team. Cooper, Erlin, Bamford, they all start in the championship. Don't, don't, don't. I'm switching off. Someone can take the channel. <laughs> Make, well, we'll make a golf well, channel. We'll do some. This else. is what I mean. Do you like brownie? Do you like badminton? I'm not saying. I'm not. I don't. I don't really know what I'm saying. I, <laughs> I was going to say, what are you bringing us? What are you to? trying to make me? What are you trying to do to me? Like, <laughs> I'm not saying that they're getting beat on purpose. I'm just saying when you're saying there about the body language and everything, like they'll still play for Leeds United next year if we go down. Fucking oh, Christ, and they will. Oh God! And which then we're gonna get, then we're gonna get hit with, with then we're gonna get, then we're gonna get hit with comments like, "Oh, they did well in the championship, though. They, they did well for." Two <laughs> Patrick seasons. Bamford doesn't even have a prolific goal scoring I love, in the championship. Like, and what I'm trying to say is, one or two I loved, years. I loved the League One team, the House and the Gradle, the Beckford, the Beckett, but it had to evolve in the championship. Yeah. They didn't take us out of the championship. It had to evolve, and now we're in the Premier League from the championship. It hasn't evolved as much as it's needed to. We're still starting games with the same players. I mean, when Dallas comes back, he probably plays. <laughs> oh, stop it. He does. And that's where stop we it. still are. We're still at that point. We're still having Cooper, Ailing, Dallas, Bamford leading this the board line. board decided that the evolution was, was Red Bull that only works in Salzburg, a one-team league. Do you know when Take That stopped like making music and then they went off for about three years and they came back again? It feels like that. Do you know what I mean? Just a boy a band coming back together again. It's a reunion. Again. It's, a reunion. <laughs> it's a cover band. But they'll save money, won't they? They'll save money. They'll save money, you know, and that's what they're all about. Saving money, saving a you know, cheap dollar. They'll have Dallas back in there for showing the same contracts. Like, a comment you know, from The Rock in, in here says, Dallas was quality. I think we all forgot 
like Dallas was quality in the championship yeah, years ago. Like under, yeah. under Bielsa, and he wasn't quite he wasn't quality prior Bielsa, by the way. He wasn't he was a misfit. I'm gonna say disagree because that first year in the Premier League, he was unbelievable. No, that's what I said under Bielsa. Under that's, Bielsa, yeah, he was brilliant. I mean, so I'm not saying that Dallas is a bad player or the bad players, the, the professional footballers. I'm not saying that. Right. I'm just saying for us to have gone to where as fans we all wanted to go, that next level, mid, the next level would have been establishing middle of the table at like ninth, 10th consistently in the Premier League before then jumping again. We're not, we're not going to do that with them players. Yeah, we're not, we're not. We're not. Like, no one's casting like yet. Just like no we had to evolve yeah, no from League One to the Championship, we had to evolve from the Championship to the Premier League. And yeah, no, but nobody's saying nobody's saying anything about Dallas. It's just evolution, everyone. Evolution. It needs to happen in football. I and listen, he was great on the Bielsa. He was him as Player of the Year in yeah, that we all um, did. first we all year, did. and in that year we stayed up. He scored a, a good goal against Burnley. I thought he was brilliant that year until he got injured as well. I'm not saying he's a bad football. I'm just saying for Leeds right. to have gone to the next level, we needed to evolve more. This is the thing, though. It's sentiment, isn't it? People get, and you can see people in the comments already saying, like, you know, they're upset at the fact that, you know, you say that Dallas needs to be, you need an improvement, even if you go down to the championship. People are living on what's happening. We're not in that era anymore. We're in a post Bielsa era, which isn't the Bielsa era. You know, it just is what it is, um, unfortunately. Connor, there's a nice comment in here that might cheer you up. It said someone bought you a Red Bull in a pub and you dumped it out. <laughs> what? What is this? Is this actually? Happen? No, no, no. no. Oh, someone right, said okay. someone joking in the comments. Actually, I am actually going to. Can you believe I'm, I'm actually in the West Stand for the game at the weekend? So I'm going to be right next to Victor. Should be fun. Rogers Lani will come up to you, wine stains on his lips, be like, "Oh, I know you. I've I've asked you to to bring smoke smoke bombs." <laughs> No, yeah, that's not done. But I've kept trying to message him. I've not put it online, just, but he's just, not responding. I'm just reading his points, and I, I know I just want to be clear. I just want to be clear with the comments. I am not saying that Erling, Dallas, Cooper, Bamford are not legends for Leeds for bringing them out of the out of the Premier League, out of the Championship. Probably, I love them to bits. I, I was delighted for Erling getting a new contract. Should Bamford still be leading the line for Leeds three years down the line in the Premier League when he hasn't played for 18 months near enough? No. He shouldn't. Are we telling Co are we saying Cooper's a legend? He was the captain that lifted the trophy coming out of the championship. For me, yeah. Yeah. A lot of tried, Connor. A lot of tried. And it's taken a long time to get us up. For me, that all of them in that team are legends for getting us into the Premier League. It's I, not slagging I, a player I, off I, to say I, that Dallas is one of my favorite players for Leeds. I, I'm not having a go at him. I'm just saying, as a club, how are we expecting to to finish eighth, ninth, tenth in the Premier League with that champ with with them Championship players? Because well, probably we saw it this the last couple, couple of weeks. We're seeing this. Came. Let's not forget before Bielsa came in, they were finishing fifteenth in the Championship. Them same players. So to, to even expect them to be able to go to them ceilings and finish in the Premier League that consistently is asking a lot. Yeah, that's a great comment by Graham, Bamford, by the way. How many goals has Bamford got this season? Graham says, Graham says spout, Bamford needs to stop spouting in, in media like fresh air, shut up and do what he's paid to do, control. I mean, I wonder what he is. In fact, you, you two keep talking. I'm going to see what he is in the Premier League for big chances missed still. Oh, go for it. Brian, big... I have a question for you, though. Um, well, I had a question for you. It just uh, drummed out of my brain. Um, I'll find another one, Gabe. That's your job. <laughs> Come on. Uh, listen, oh, yeah. No, here's what it was. So have you seen that the Luke Ayling's been immense past two or three weeks, right? He's been very, very poor. He's joint all season. Sixth. He's joint sixth for big chances missed, and he's played. Patrick about Bamford is joint sixth in the league for big chances missed. How many matches has he played, Connor? Hit us joint, with that data. Joint sixth. Um, it's actually not saying, but I can tell you that he's missed ten big chances, which yep. is, which is level with which is level with Kai Havertz, Harry Kane, and Mitrovic. And he's not played except as many for, games except for as Harry Kane. Actually, puts some away. As does Mitrovic. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. It, it, the, the point I wanted to make about Luke Ayling is that we have such a recency bias in a, in a weird thing in this fan base. Luke Ayling's been very poor all season, stood on his head last couple of weeks, 
And there are people really celebrating the contract extension after all season of saying that he hasn't been Premier League quality. The point here is not about individually identifying players we do think are good enough or don't think are, are good enough. It's that we have this mindset as a fan base that you can't say thank you for what you've done and you've been amazing. Mm, I agree. And then move on. I like, agree. We have to – like we're a fan base that's stuck I, I wasn't, in moments. I wasn't I, – I thought twelve month, another 12 months was fair. Well, it would be fl- fair for the championship. On the flip side, and Bob's right, Luke Kalen is still our best right back. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, that is true. More negligence from the board. But that's but not Luke Kalen's right. fault. No, it's exactly. not. That's not Luke Kalen's fault. He's still our best right back, so why would we not give our best right back another 12 Because months? we should just go out and get a better right back, Brownie. And who's that come back to again? Yeah, right. I mean, again, that goes back to the board. But, like, we have to have a standard of player uh, f- uh, for the Premier League. Like, there are a million reasons to say, well, it's not his fault. It's in the be- like, like, we just don't have a standard. Do you know it's, what's kind of completely under the radar that not many people have mentioned? Go on. Max Werber was our new left back. He started centre-half every game. When we signed him, that was our, our left back replacement. He came on at Cardiff in our first game in centre mid, away at Cardiff, and he's played. And don't get me wrong, he's, he's been brilliant, yeah. but we haven't we haven't addressed the dislocated left-back. shoulder the other day. It's we haven't we haven't addressed the left back in, in, in incident issue. No. It, it, it's I, you will remember this Connor in that year where it was starting to unravel. It was square pegs FC. We were putting square pegs in round hole constantly, and still. Three years, three and a half years into Premier League, we're still doing that, and then people are wondering why we're nineteenth. At some point, square pegs in round holes is going to come unstuck, and I just don't think we've got the 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 quality to cover. Like like I've just said, Luke Aaron is our best right back at the club. Junior Furpo is our only left back at the club. Someone brought up Elan Melier. Elia Melier is our best goalkeeper at the club. There's nobody to challenge him. Patrick Bamford is our only out and out number nine. There's one person in each position constantly. It's not sustainable. And imagine where we'd be if Rodrigo didn't have the season he was having. Well, but, uh, I mean, <laughs> just. You, you're talking bottom of the league, aren't you? If you don't have Rodrigo yeah. at all, it's. Yeah. Could even say the same thing for Nonso, who they, who they who they made a mistake in getting at this point, you know. Um, wow. Every team can look at, oh, we should have beaten that team, or what if we didn't have that player? At the end of the day, he does play for Leeds. Nonso does play for Leeds, and he has put them performances in for Leeds. So, right. I I, I go full circle back to we spent thirty five million on a twenty year old. Again, it's Stop. another decision. Who doesn't score ball. goals? It do, it's yeah. another decision by the board that's just baffling. That's yeah. not Ruta's fault at all, like I said earlier. I'm not saying he's a bad player. Was he the player we needed? I'm not so sure. No. Not for the here and now. But this is yeah. the board again, isn't it? Thinking about long term. How many players have we signed? Young players for the long term. No good if we're going to be in the championship. No, not going to be the here. Point of having them? We're going to be selling them anyway. Yeah. Yeah. At a loss. Yeah, at a loss. Um, <laughs> right, last year we got a Southampton game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, okay. Yeah, I think we've delved into it enough as well, guys. There's been 2,000 of you watching this, which is the highest live uh, viewers the, the debrief has ever got. Please make sure you're liking the video um, and all that good stuff. Um, right, okay. Who wants That's to go a first? Comment. Before you get into it, Connor, yeah, sorry, yeah. You can round yeah. it off. The comment then, 65 million on Aronson and Ruta. And then we'll do the 21s tonight, aren't they? They're in the 21s. And you want us and you want wait, Aronson's in the 21s too. Aronson and Rutter, yeah, yeah. I think so. Really? Wow, okay. That's shocking. That that do you know what I mean? That in a nutshell, we've got 65 million pounds worth of players playing in the 21s. Jeez. Imagine Brownie, Brownie, we've got we've got nigh on 40 to 45 million coming back on loans uh, in the summer with Dan James and your answer. About to say oh that's right, Dan James James is still. We've got yep. 30 million that down at Fulham. So there's that right. So just put them four players. Urente, Dan James, Roy Ruta, 
Allenson, over £100 million of players. Two are playing in the 21s and two of them are different clubs. And people will come back and they'll say, yeah, well, we made bargains in Melier and Strout, but it's still outweighed by the amount of bad signings we've made, even in the good period at the club for me. Um, so, yeah, don't get me wrong. Uh, 3.5 million for Nonso is fab business, but it, unfortunately there's there's an equilibrium here. Um, okay, right. It's not fun, this, is it? It's not fun at all. It's not enjoyable doing it, guys. It really isn't. Um, Marsh disappointed manager of John Smith's brewery. <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh, thanks, right, uh, Gabe. Yeah, Southampton. One nil, Southampton. God, I'm making a prediction, oh, right? I, I've, oh, I've I've given a faithful oh. projection past couple of weeks. It, it, maybe it, it, I'll be wrong. It, it, maybe I'm the it, new it, Connor that my predictions come ha- come opposite. So so maybe. Get, but... I, I predicted a draw last week. I think Brown was the only one who defeated who put a defeat on, and I think he was right. I think he said one nil. Yeah, I think one um, Southampton. Anyway, um, Kevin says Leeds. Oh, imagine oh. God! Imagine that. And no, but see, no, but it's and and we say this every time on the debrief, don't we? It's so Leeds Brownie. How many times have you been down at Ellen Road and you've just seen something like this? You know where it's just it's all turned. Um, I mean, I hope this wouldn't happen. Of course, I do. One nil Leeds late goal. Um, one one. I mean, it's not. It just won't. A draw won't. But a draw's not enough, is it? A draw's not enough. They have to win this game. It's no, easy, a, gap, it? a, gap, a gap starting to appear now. It's two points now. If, we get, it as if well. we get beat and the other teams win, or want you're looking at five points and you got Chelsea around the corner, a, a gap's starting to creep. We, it, I didn't say the Everton game was a must win. Saturday is. Yeah, Jesus. I mean, if you can't beat Southampton at home, might as well just pack up and just if go, we lose, go down if to I'm, If I'm correct and we lose, I'm going to send someone like welfare wise over to, over to Connor's flat. I mean, I went into the Everton game, like I said, not with much. We've never done well at Goodison Park. Down the years, we've not done great at Goodison Park. Um, we had the the, the winning lockdown when there was no fans when Rafinha scored. That seems a long time ago. That seems a different lifetime. That 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 era. There's no that fans there, though. There's no fans. There's no fans. It was a different environment. We won at Anfield this season. We hadn't done that in a generation. I just think I, I'm I'm done giving. I'm done looking at history. Yeah, it's it is really hard. I, I, I'm not underestimating. It's just at some point, unless. Like we could make, and in some cases, I have justifications for dropping dropping points at every ground, and it just it has to stop, or we're going to go down. You know. Um, I'm going two 0 leads on Saturday. All right, Brownie. Who's scoring? You. Um, <laughs> A man has jumped onto the pitch. <laughs> now, Nonto and. Something like Robin Cockheader or something from a corner, Strike Header or something. Thinking 2 0. If Shea Adams scores against us, I'm going to lose it. See, Morpay had one cleared off the line. <laughs> Morpay had scored against us again. Imagine that. Jesus Big Mac Christ. McKenney cleared it off the line, didn't he? Just the, the, the one of the most. They just, no, he just literally scores against us. That's it. Um, right. Uh, so I've said this is how it'll go. It'll be, I genuinely believe it'll be very marsh. Uh, they'll score they'll score early and then it'll be frantic and chaotic and we'll score in the last five minutes from a set piece and it'll end up being 1-1. One, one. That's what I think. Dead rubber. Nothing. To, it'll just be 1-1. One, one. Hey, I've not said we'll lose, but it'll be 1-1. One, one. Crap. I would Rubbish. love for Brownie to be right though, honestly. Oh, just imagine that. 2-0 two nil and, two nil and a clean sheet. I just... Can't see it. And then they'll give Scoobs a fucking seven-year contract. Christ, I swore. Sorry. Um, Here's a question. Do we have a new manager in for Saturday or not? No. Yeah, I think we do. I, yeah. I think we will as well. Yeah, I think we will. Um... Can you watch your match on Saturday? I, I don't know why I'm laughing. Because I think... Because if you don't, you'll cry, bro. <laughs> That's I, fine. I think I'd bit my... Imagine if Rad Zanata just decided they were going to be in dugout. Just... In the dugout. <laughs> Roger Zani with a glass of wine. They're just giving it two fingers up to everyone and then cupping his ear and he's stood in the dugout giving like instructions. I can't imagine what's going to go. I cannot imagine how it's going to be in the last 10 minutes when they're 1-0 down. Um, do you remember last season at Brighton? Leeds were playing Brighton at home and it was turning big time. Do you remember that? And Brighton were 1-0 up and then Strout yeah. scored in the last minute. Yeah, it was turning. Up, didn't he? And Strout yeah. put it in, yeah. 
It feels like it's it feel I just think it's gonna go. It's gonna be absolute especially if he's there. Otter and Rads are there. It's oh god, it's gonna be a bear pit. Um, and we'll have some people on Twitter if we beat Southampton saying, Hey, uh, maybe the Europa League's not not out of uh not out that'll, of that'll, uh, Oh yeah, that'll, that'll there come. will be yeah. people. Yeah. That's when you need to unfollow Brownie. <laughs> Europa League. <laughs> hey, we'll win the FA Cup, Matt. <laughs> Forget grass here, really. got to the final, didn't he? But um, anyway, we'll uh, we'll leave it there, everyone. Uh, really appreciate your support. Make sure you like before you leave. Um, listen, it's always a therapy session. It's cathartic. It's not you're not going to come on here and hear any pos- positive vibes. Pat and Brownie's two no prediction, um, but unfortunately, Leeds are in absolutely dire straits at the minute. So um, we hope you've enjoyed it anyway, and you've got some of your feelings out in the comments. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, lads, cheers for joining me, and uh, we'll speak to you in a bit. Cheers.